welcome back to the Sticks Plus Twine podcast. My name is Eric. I'm coming to you from my home here in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. This is a podcast about knitting, um, and that involves, of course, uh, works in progress, finished objects, some acquisitions, a knit along that we're finishing um, that finished this week, and a new one that's starting. Oh, yes, there's a new one. Uh, a little bit of travel news and updates. We've got some prizes to give away, which is great. Um, and uh, I think we'll just start with what's, you know, in the mug today. Uh, this is a, a green tea that was sent to me in my tea swap that I held earlier this year. And Jacqueline from um, uh, Japan, she's a Canadian, but is living in Japan, sent me some amazing green tea. And that's what's in my mug today. I don't know what brand it is. Um, Lupicia, I think is the name, but I could be completely wrong on how to pronounce that. Um, and I don't know if you can get it here or not, but I'm enjoying it anyway. Mm. Still a little hot, so we'll come back to that. We'll just let that sit there and cool down. So let's start talking about some knitting stuff, shall we? Uh, I have a finished object and I have a work in progress that I will share with you today. And I will say one thing. Um, this sort of keeping myself accountable to you is really kind of working. It worked with my Cozy Memories blanket, got a lot of work done on that. When I said, don't let me come back without having it done, or at least having some squares done. Um, and the same thing held true for my popcorn socks. Ta-da! I have two. They are finished. They're on the blockers, but they are not blocked. Um, I worked like a mad person on getting the second sock done. Uh, I had some time on my hands when I was uh, on an airplane earlier this week, and um, I used that time, I think, to great effect. Um, so I have two, two socks finished. Um, this is in the opal um, popcorn um, yarn. You'll notice one's a little bit shorter than the other because I played a little bit of yarn chicken, not gonna lie. I got a little bit overly ambitious, let's say, because um, I had done the first sock, and then from the second sock, I added a square to my blanket because I wanted to, go figure. I also did the sort of small baby sock um, in last week's episode. You'll note that I was in the, uh, I went to the Toronto Knitters Frolic where um, I learned from Stephanie Pro McPhee her sock tips and uh, in a class there. So I, um, when the skin was almost done and I knew I was going to be traveling with it, I decided to wind it into a ball and uh, as opposed to having sort of the loose sort of already wound skein just for ease of transportation and it ended up having a bit of yarn barf at the end and I thought oh I won't need all that so I weighed the sock figured out how many grams I needed turned out I had just the right amount and I'm telling you guys by the time the second one was done I literally had I think about a meter of yarn left so I just made it um, I finished them this morning. I'm a little bit later podcasting than I would like to have been today uh, for two reasons. One, I needed to finish the sock, and two, we just had some kind of weird thunderstorm that just blew on through, and there was all kinds of thunder and stuff, so I thought I'd best wait till that's done because it's going to be a little disruptive. Thanks, Mother Nature, on Mother's Day. By the way, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers that are out there. So I hope you had a great day, spent some time with your mom. Um, so I don't have a hoe. <laughs> I have a faux, yay! You'll note uh, the stripes don't match up. I don't care. Um, with this kind of sock, with this kind of pattern, I, I really, it doesn't matter to me, really. Um, so I will be blocking these a little bit later today, putting them back on the blocker so that they can dry because I really want to wear them uh, before it gets too hot to be wearing wool socks. So that's done. But I did say that I have a work in progress. So you're wondering, hmm, wonder if he's working on something he's already worked on or if it's something brand new. Well let the mystery be resolved in my, uh, what is this, my field bag from Fringe Supply Co. I have a new project. So you'll remember last week I had purchased three skeins of Quince & Co. Um, Chickadee, which I had kind of had a thought of what I might make with it. I originally thought I might make a hat or something, and then I went back to my original plan. But I realized I thought I was buying Finch, which is the fingering weight. Turns out not so much. Um, it was the sport weight. So I did a little bit of digging around to see if the original pattern I wanted to do uh, would work with it. I noticed a lot of people in Ravelry had already done it in sport weight. So I thought, what the heck, I'm going to do it. So I have cast on and have made a little bit of progress on 
the three color cashmere cowl uh, from uh, Hohi Locatelli. And I have got the first color band complete. I am working on the second color band. This is in, as I said, Quince and Co. Chickadee. This is in Iceland, which is the gray, the bird's egg, which is the blue. And when I get to it, I will be doing the split pea, which is the green. Um, I am actually really, really liking the pattern. It's pretty simple. It's pretty easy. It's well written. Um, I like the way it's turning out so far. I like the fabric that it's turning out. These are on my, and I'm just checking, these are my 3.5 millimeter needles. My, um, these are Knit Picks Interchangeables. Um, and I, they're, they're great for it. I like working with quince. I really like working on with metal needles because the, the yarn in the fabric slides pretty easily. So I'm really happy with that. Um, can you believe in a week I managed to get an entire sock done and a good chunk started on, on that. So those are my current um, FO and whip. I have not touched anything else uh, because I really wanted to get that sock done. The thing is when you, you kind of like make a commitment to uh, viewers, um, you kind of want to live up to that commitment. And I, I promised I would have made progress on the sock. So uh, and I was so close this morning to finishing, I thought I'd just have to do it. So um, that's living in this one. I find this bag is really great for traveling because it has a lot of internal pockets and things. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. There's all kinds of pictures, way better than I will take. Um, and it's got a nice handle on it so I can sort of traipse through the airport with it. And uh, yeah, so that's that one. So the sock that I just finished was a vanilla sock, um, 72 stitch on 2.75 millimeter needles and I'm finding that they're just a little bit looser than I would like. So I am going to, I've, I've been thinking about going down either a needle size or a stitch count or both and I think I really like the 2.75 millimeter needles. Frankly, they anything smaller tends to hurt my hands over time. Uh, I can't knit quite as long otherwise so I'm going to go down a stitch count size. But it just so turns out that uh, Nathan, who is the sock magician, has just released a new sock recipe that I'm really, really excited to try out. He was so very kind to gift me. Haha, <laughs> sorry. Nathan, I know he. Yeah, if you haven't watched his latest episode, he goes on a bit of a rant around gifted versus gifting versus gift. Um, I thought it was actually quite funny. Uh, but he was so kind as to send me a copy of his pattern, which I am looking forward to trying it out. It is a recipe that sort of combines the best of toe-up construction so you can maximize your yarn usage and it has a gusset and heel flap which for someone like myself who has a high instep is really beneficial so thank you very much Nathan for that if you want a copy of your very own to try out you can buy it on his Ravelry store it's two pounds uh, which is really not bad for patterns. So give that a go if you haven't already, if you haven't already noticed it or seen it. Um, I will be using that um, in the very near future. Let's talk a little bit about the Exploration Station Cal because it's done! Okay, I, I promise no more sound effects. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. Um, we had a whole bunch of finished objects. We had so much participation. Uh, there were 49 finished objects by the time I closed the thread yesterday morning which for a project of this size, I was really, really pleased to see. So congratulations to everyone who finished. Keep plugging away all those people who are still working on it. You will get there. Uh, once you get through sort of the brioche, it's all easy sailing past there. Um, the brioche is not hard. It's just sort of time intensive. Uh, but other than that, the rest of the, the sections are really, really, they move very quickly and they're very easy to do. So um, I should be wearing mine today, but I'm a bit warm and um, I, I have, my Darth Vader t-shirt on today for a very specific reason, which we shall come to, I promise. I'm looking at my notes to say, uh, we did do a giveaway on the on April 12th for the Whip Party, which those prizes have already now been distributed and sent out. And now it comes for the time for the final object prizes. So um, I have a couple of prizes that I unfortunately left on the other side of the room. So I'm going to pause here, go get the prizes, and we'll come back and I'll show you what they are. And now we're back with prizes. So the very first uh, winner that I drew uh, out of the 49 um, entries into the finished objects thread, um, of course I did not include my initial post in that drawing. I used random.org to select random prize winners. 
And the first one is Sarah, who is Sarah in Houston. Yay! You won a prize. So yours is really, really lovely. I loved the colors in it. It was stunning. And you have won this amazing skein of, um, this is the Sad Lester Sock, which is 100% Superwash BFL. It's 430 yards and 100 grams, so it's a relatively light um, BFL uh, weight. This is in the Daleks Don't Give Out Pink Slips colorway, um, which of course I have one for myself as well, so I hope you really enjoy that. And um, what was the other prize? Oh, the other prize, of course. You have also won Amina Makes Project Bag. It is absolutely stunning. It's in men's shirting fabric, and there, I'm hoping you can see. I'm, of course, I'm struggling. There we go. You can see that Mina has her little tag there. It's in these beautiful gray and purple colors, which are so Mina, of course. And it's got this beautiful lining. The lining matches the handle. So you will be receiving those. So if you can get in touch with me, Sarah, and give me your postal address, I will make sure that that makes its way to you. And I've just tucked the yarn right inside the bag for you. So congratulations, Sarah. Uh, we have a second winner who is Marion, and she is Marion Sand from Norway. Yay, Marion! Uh, you have won a pattern of your choice of uh, value up to $10 on Ravelry. So all you need to do is get in touch with me. Let me know what pattern you would like and I will gift it to you. Simple as that. Um, but I would also like to sweeten the pot just a little bit and I'm also going to gift you a copy of Stephen West's latest shawl pattern which is called Knit and Slide. What I loved about when I looked at the pattern, it's got this really cool scalloped edge on it and I'll put a picture here of what that looks like. But it's got the same technique as I think it's section four of the exploration station which has this really great um, sort of welted fabric that gets created through sort of a double garter stitch really really lovely uh, so there was i promised a prize for um, participation on instagram as well and you remember our hashtag was ESST cal 16 and the winner of that is favorite fibers um, by the time this gets posted i will have messaged you on instagram and you have also won a copy of the knit and slide pattern. So all you need to do is just let, make sure that I've got your correct Ravelry username and I will gift you that pattern as well. So there you go. Yay, Cal is done. Thank you to everyone who participated. I was really, really thrilled to see that. Um, it was a very fun knit. I don't know that I would have made it uh, fully to the end had I not been on holiday through a good part of it that I could just keep knitting away. Um, but I, I really, really enjoyed it, and I know it's something that I'm going to wear for quite some time to come. So that's it for the current cow. So we've talked, just keeping count, FO. We've talked about a whip. We've talked about prizes. So those are all done. So let's see, what should we talk about next? Let's talk about some acquisitions. So last week, I had said that I had some acquisitions that had come in the post that I hadn't um, had the chance to talk about yet because I wanted to sort of suss them out myself. Um, before I started talking about them. And today, of course, we will talk about those. So um, the first thing we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about the Dyed in the Wool yarn company. So um, I was just ever so generously gifted, sorry, Nathan, gifted. I was sent two skeins of yarn, uh, one for me and one for a prize. And the first one that I was sent, this is the Itty Sky colorway on the Smooth Operator um, base. This is 100% Superwash Merino. It's 100 grams and 438 yards. And it is a gray base with great speckles of purple and blue in them. And they're just very much me, um, I think, anyway. So that that one's really, really lovely. I think that one's really, really cool. Um, it's, it's sort of silvery almost with these sort of great speckles in it. Um, so there was one there. And then the second skein this one's really interesting, guys, and I don't know if it's everyone's cup of tea, but this is her Rotten Banana colorway. It is as bright and vibrant as it seems to be on camera. I'm not sure if that's really blowing out. That's maybe if I cover my face. There we go. Now it's getting a little more in, in focus. Um, it's not all pure sort of highlighter yellow. It's got some good tonality to it, and it's, of course, got all these great black speckles on them. So. Um, 
this was uh, from Vanessa. Thank you very much, Vanessa. If you have not checked out her her site, she is died in the wool yarnco.etsy.com. Of course, we'll have a little thing down here for you, and you can see there's her nice little tag. Ta da! Thank you very, very, very much, Vanessa. Uh, the other um, piece of mail that I received was uh, from a company I've spoken about before called Red Sock Blue Sock. And you might remember, as I reach over to grab those from the chair, that um, I had spoken about some yarn that I had purchased from them previously uh, that is now in my stash that I will be using, uh, hopefully, in the very near future. And uh, so that is their card and their contact details. I love this. It's a colorful yarn adventure. Well, of course it is. Um, and this is some amazing stuff. I'm going to tell you guys right away. This is Ashley from Ottawa who sent me a red sock, blue sock tote bag, which you can buy on their, uh, on their Etsy shop as well. Sorry, it's not Etsy shop. Um, it's right from their own website, which is red sock, blue sock yarn. Uh, she actually sent three skeins of yarn for me to take a look at. And again, one of these will be staying with me and two will be given for future prizes. So the first one I want to talk about, um, this is on her comfort sock. All three of these are her comfort sock base, which is 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 420 yards and 115 gram skein. So it's a little bit bigger than, than a standard 100 gram, which is kind of nice. And this one is in her Gotham colorway. And I'm seeing this great silvery, silvery gray uh, with some purple in it. This, this says Mina, does this not say Mina? Um, this just reminds me of um, your cardigan that you that you have, Mina. I think it's cardigan. Could be a jumper. No, cardigan. Um, so that one's Gotham, which is very cool. She also sent me this one, which is called Lakeside. And Lakeside is almost like a, it's another variant. Uh, but this one's got some amazing blue, uh, some blue streaks in it. This isn't so much speckled as it is. Uh, it's got some speckles, I guess. Uh, but can you imagine those two together? That would actually be really cool, especially if you alternated skeins or, or did striping on it. That would be neat. But those are not the end of the story. Oh, no. She also sent a sock adventure, which is kind of cool. This is in the grasshopper colorway, which is the green, which has some great bits of blue, some darker blue, some lighter blue, a little bit of gray, and soot which is in a it's a much smaller uh, size this is a 25 gram skein of soot which of course is perfect for let's say it all together heels cuffs and toes um this again it's the same sort of uh it's the same base 115 gram skein and 125 gram skein 80 percent superwash merino and uh 20 percent nylon those would make some really cool socks i think those would make some funky socks so one of these will be staying with me and two will be going up for prizes and what I'm going to do is when I get to that point where I'm going to use these for a prize, guess what? I'm going to let you choose. I love them all. I think they're fantastic. Um, I have my preference, but I would love any of these. So I'm going to let you choose. How's that? Um, I had a little fun adventure this week and uh, I posted a little video uh, yesterday. Uh, oh, so there's a little bird that just popped out onto my balcony. I haven't seen birds on the balcony in quite some time. Um, I had a little adventure this week where I went to a very secret mystery location. I went to London. Uh, I was there for a grand total of 36 hours, and I was ever so fortunate to be able to spend the day with my new BFF, Katie, uh, from Inside Number 23. Of course, you guys know Katie already. Of course you do. Um, but it was a real pleasure to get to spend some time with her. So I flew out on Wednesday evening, um, knit pretty much across the pond, um, to sort of borrow the phrase, and uh, landed, went directly to go meet Katie, spent about 12 hours in total talking pretty much nonstop the entire time, uh, which is fabulous. We, um, we ate, we shopped, we went uh, to a park and we sat, and after the first hour of just sitting and talking in the park, we realized we should be knitting. So we did some knitting in the park together. Um, then we picked up my partner, Sebastian, and, uh, and met him and made our way into the city where we got to meet Emrys, which was a real treat. I wasn't sure that I was going to get to meet Emrys as well, but I did. And that was fabulous. Then we went to dinner and then unfortunately Katie had to go home because 
poor little Rolly needed to, you know, be taken for a walk and fed and all that fun stuff. So um, I'm sure if you would like to see that, there will be a link um, below here to uh, take a look at that video if you haven't seen it already. And of course, Katie, from her perspective, also did a fun little vlog as well. Right, so uh, Katie and I really, I think, that just I adore her I, and I can't wait to spend more time with her. Um, so hi, Katie. Uh, and of course, what would a trip to London be without a trip to a yarn shop? Of course. So where did we go? But ta-da, we went to Loop um, and I loved Loop. I thought it was a very, very cute store. The staff were um, interesting. I think they were just really busy because they looked like they just got a big shipment in and they were putting stuff away. Um, but we did get a chance to chit chat just a little bit. And of course I couldn't come away without anything. So I bought myself a few things and I bought myself, first of all, this amazing Loop Acorn uh, needle gauge, which I love. Um, I seem to be collecting needle gauges, and that's okay. Um, they're fun little souvenirs to buy when you're traveling and going to different yarn shops. So I bought that one, but I also bought, I couldn't help it, I had to. And if you've seen Katie's uh, video, you will recognize this. It's a little teeny one. It's a little teeny beehive with a bee on it. And of course, it's a needle gauge. Yep, had to have another one. Who doesn't need another one? And I had to buy some yarn. Um, their prices weren't great for a Canadian. Um, I was looking for something unusual. I like to buy yarns that I can't readily get at home. This yarn that I did buy, I, I could get at home very, very easily. It's just at Romney, uh, one of my local yarn shops. Um, but the price is quite high. And I think it's just because, you know, it's exchange, it's import from Europe, that sort of thing. But I bought myself a skein uh, or ball of my very first Zauber ball, crazy Zauber ball. Um, I don't even know if this has a colorway on it. I'm calling it Grello. Um, does it have, oh, it's color 2204. Um, I don't really know what that, um, there's some other name, but I don't know if it's German or doesn't matter. Reality is I really liked this. It was the one that really called to me. It's got this really good chartreuse green in it and different grays and it's very me. I wasn't crazy originally with Zauber Ball just because the, the barber pulling in the ply was a bit much for me. But um, when I saw them knitted up, I, I, I really thought it was uh, an interesting textural component, which for a nice vanilla sock would be great. Anyone who's not used this before, um, and I haven't, so I, I'm speaking just from what's on the label, it feels, feels much softer than a Regia, that's for sure, um, or an Opal or something like that. But it's 75% wool and 25% uh, nylon, of course. So, you know, great for socks. And that was all I bought. Um, oh, I lied. I forgot one other, one other thing. And of course it's on the other side of the room. So I'm gonna pause here and I'll come back and I will show you what that is. You'd think when I got up the first time to go and get the stuff that I forgot, I'd go and get the other stuff that I forgot, but not so much, not so lucky. Um, so the other, the other thing that I picked up that I thought was really interesting, uh, I like getting magazines. Magazines are kind of my thing. Uh, I don't tend to buy a lot of them anymore just because there's, it's too expensive to keep buying them. So uh, in Canada, we're fortunate enough to have this um, app called Texture, which is sort of a magazine aggregator. It's kind of like Netflix for magazines, you know, pay one price and it's all you can read, which I really appreciate because I, I'm a bit of a skimmer when it comes to magazines. But there are times when you just need a paper magazine. So um, when I was sort of poking around waiting for my flight home, which yes, I, I flew there and back and was home in under, um, it was spent 48 hours or so, just truth be told. Um, I saw this one magazine, which the one thing that I think the Australians do it, um, the Brits do it, and they do it really well, is they bundle things in with magazines, which I really appreciate and enjoy. Um, and this particular magazine is the Let's Knit magazine. Hopefully you can see that. And um, this is the May issue. There's all kinds of patterns and ideas and I haven't really gone through it yet. Um, but it came with this really fun little um, add-in, which is Farmyard Friends. It is a collection of five toy patterns with the yarn to make them. There's uh, four balls of yarn 
in them. I don't know what this is really. It doesn't really say. I'm assuming it's some kind of acrylic. I don't think it's wool. Um, but for little toy, it doesn't really matter. But you got four little colors of these guys um, to make all of the different toys that you see here on the cover. But it wouldn't be enough for me just to buy one and tell you about it. No, I bought you one, of course. So uh, I'm going to open a thread in the Ravelry group for your chance to win this great magazine. And I'm not sure what the prompt is going to be. The prompt, I, you're going to have to look in the group because I don't know what it's going to be yet. I just sort of, I'm making this part up. Uh, but I want to make sure I get it out to you. I don't want to hold it out for uh, another cow or something like that. I just want to make sure. I just want to share the love. So uh, take a look in the Ravelry group. By the time this is uploaded, as soon as I know that it's uploaded, I will include a, a thread with a prompt, um, probably something to do about knitting. Go figure. Uh, <laughs> I'm making myself laugh. So uh, I thought that was fun. Uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it. And uh, when I get around to making some of those little stuffed toys, I will make sure to show them here on the podcast as well. I have been meaning for some time, and because I have been playing catch up a little bit uh, with the podcast, I have been answering most of the uh, Ask Me Anything uh, questions that are raised in, um, in the actual threads and responding to people directly. But I thought that they're, the last two that came in I thought were quite interesting. So I thought I would share with those now. Um, the first one was Jessica, who asked two questions. Um, Do I have a favorite thing that someone has made for me? And how did I get start, started knitting? Um, the favorite thing that anyone's ever made for me uh, probably, probably was a sweater that my mom made me when I was in high school. It was sort of a uh, Lopi-inspired sweater. Um, it was kind of all the rage uh, back then. I really, really loved it. It was a cream body uh, and the yoke uh, with it, the sort of color work pattern had um, blues and purples in it. And it, it was all acrylic. It was warm as anything. Um, I'm glad she didn't make it in actual wool because I would have destroyed it at the time. I don't know what happened to it. Uh, when I moved to Australia, I sort of divested myself of most of my belongings because I wasn't really planning on coming back. So. Um, I, my full intention was to try and, uh, and emigrate to Australia and, uh, I really didn't think I needed it. So I may have donated it to, um, Goodwill or Salvation Army or something like that. Um, but that was probably my favorite thing that anyone's ever made for me. So, um, I will say the caveat to that is to date. Um, I, there will, I'm sure be something that somewhere along the line, maybe Sebastian will knit me something. Uh, you never know, you know, hope springs eternal. Uh, but that actually brings me to the second part of your question, which was, how did I get started knitting? Uh, I've answered this before, but I'm going to uh, go through it again, just because I know it's come up a couple of times. So uh, I have been knitting since about October last year. Again, I did learn when I was in high school. Um, it didn't really stick for a very long time. But when Sebastian suggested that we pick up a new hobby, uh, in the fall that would sort of carry us to the winter with things to do that wouldn't be that expensive. Okay, insert Google here. Um, that we take up knitting. There was a new Michaels that opened up around the corner. So of course we started like most people and started with uh, Michaels, uh, the, the I forget what the brand is, but very, very inexpensive aluminum needles, which are not very good with cords on the circulars that are terrible, uh, but I made do, made them work. Um, uh, clover bamboo needles, which with acrylic yarns is not the great combination because it's tough to knit with and it, the yarn is splitty and all that fun stuff. But I stuck with it and really, really enjoyed it. Um, and here we are today. Um, Sebastian does not knit. He has sort of the first foot and a half of a scarf finished that he has not picked back up. Um, I may frog the yarn and turn it into something else. There's enough to make some uh, some hats for donation and stuff like that. So I might do some of that charity knitting um, a little bit further down the road. So that's how we started knitting. Um, and here we are today with the podcast. Um, the second one uh, that I wanted to answer is Susan asked, to play yarn chicken or not play yarn chicken? How do I roll? I tend to not play yarn chicken. Um, I would rather buy more and have more than I need than to not have enough. Um, the only time I have played yarn chicken is with uh, rewind to, oh, 30 minutes ago or so when I was talking about my socks. 
I think that's the only time I've actually played yarn chicken. Um, I don't like it. It makes me really uncomfortable. It gives me anxiety. I have yarn anxiety uh, about that. So I don't. Um, and we've already talked about that. So I, I don't like to, I'd rather have more in my stash than not enough. I can always find a use for it. Um, sock yarn, thankfully, cozy memories blanket works, scrappy socks, it all works. So, so I don't do that. Um, speaking about the Ravelry group, I wanted to say thank you to everybody who started having some really great, interesting conversations and showing what they're working on in the what's on your needles, um, thread. Uh, it's come up a couple of times in conversations with other podcasters and some um, fans of this podcast. Sort of the, the thought that um, you guys get to know me quite a bit, um, obviously, because I talk about my life and what I'm working on. But I don't get necessarily the same, um, the same amount of information back. And I'm really curious as to what you're working on. I get inspired by your color choices and your yarn choices and what's working and what doesn't. And clearly as a still relatively new knitter who I, I progressed pretty quickly, but um, I'm still relatively new and I like seeing what you're working on. So if you've got something you're working on, need advice or a question, um, please do feel free to share. Uh, I seem to get a lot of questions sent to me about color choices and, and I'm thrilled to help out with color choices. Uh, I've worked with color for a long time um, and clearly color is so personal what you really like and don't like, but sometimes a second opinion really helps. So um, thank you to everybody who started participating in that thread uh, and keep adding into it. Please join in the conversation. So after the exploration station, which let's face it, guys, that I-cord bind off is a bit of a bear. It is, it's a bit of a doing task. Um, I wanted to do something. I really like the fact that I had socks to work on because they were vanilla socks and it was a great palette cleanser, so to speak. Um, didn't have to think about it, just knit, 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 round, 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 and off the needles they go. Um, but I wanted to do something that was a little bit of a shorter, little less involved knit along. And guess what? We're launching today. Yes, that's right. Um, today. There's no time to think about it. We're just going to do it. Um, and we are launching um, a, what I hope to be uh, a really fun, interesting cow. We are going to be knitting on the Movie Night sock pattern by Anne Hansen, who is Knit Spot. Uh, this pattern was given to me by a very fabulous viewer who wishes to remain anonymous, and I wanted to respect that. Uh, but I love the pattern. It's a tweed rib pattern. I will insert a picture here of the pattern's um, end result, of course, not the pattern itself. It is a paid for pattern, um, so you will need to pay for it. Uh, that said, Anne's patterns are extraordinarily well written. They are in seven. This particular pattern is in seven different seven seven different sizes. I'm very excited about this pattern. Can you tell? I have had this on my queue to work on for quite some time now, and I really, really wanted to get to it. I wanted something that was a little more interesting than a plain vanilla sock, but nothing so complex as a full pattern sock. I, I appreciate everybody that's been working on the fine and dandy sock and the monkey sock. Of course, those patterns are amazing. Cookie's patterns are amazing too, but this particular cow is all about the movie night sock. And there's a number of reasons why. Um, the first reason is, and there's sort of a number of different things that all sort of came into play that made me go, yeah, this is the right one. So Allison, who is the fabulous podcaster at uh, the Yarn Parlor, had reached out to me quite a bit of time ago uh, asking if I would be interested in um, having some prizes for an upcoming cow or any cow that I wanted from her shop. Uh, of course, I graciously said, hello, of course I would. Um, and so she was so kind to send me um, a bag from her shop for me to take a look at and as a, a gift for me. And we agreed that it would be best for her to be able to ship those gifts directly to you as opposed to she's based in Israel so rather than ship them to Canada and then me shipping them out that we would just ship once and we'd be great there but I have mine to show you so to go along with our movie night Cal you need to see this this is the most amazing drawstring project bag which looks like a bag of popcorn how amazing um, the details on here are stunning there is a toggle closure to make sure it stays shut. 
the popcorn fabric is sewn in separately. The inside fabric, which on yours may be slightly different, but that's okay, is really cool sort of retro, let's go to the snack bar kind of fabric. There is a tag on the back, which you've got to see this. Look at this, guys. Ticket, admit one. How amazing. The thought behind this, unreal. The top of the bag uh, does not feel like it's been lined, but the bottom, the base of the bag, has definitely got a little bit of quilting in it. Um, this is perfect for socks. It is the perfect size for socks. Uh, I can't imagine it being any better. Like if we just stuff in one, say my crazy Zauber ball inside, and you can see how, how awesome is that. This is the perfect bag to take if you are going to the cinema, if you're going to go and see a film and you wanna take your knitting with you. Um, you could even clip on Oh, say a uh, needle gauge on the side if you really wanted to add some accessories to it. Um, she did send a um, progress keeper, which is a little bag of popcorn that goes with it to mine, um, which I adore. So let's see, we've got pattern. Yep. We've got project bags and there will be two for prizes for you. So that's going to happen. Now we just have to figure out what yarn to use. So here's the other piece to it. I'm going to be using a particular yarn that is movie inspired. You do not have to do that uh, for this cow. What you do need to do, uh, obviously to participate and to be eligible for prizes, obviously be a member of the group. That's kind of without saying. Um, buy the pattern, obviously, because you need the pattern. Use any yarn you want for making those socks. However, the caveat to this is, I would like you to be creative in sort of talking about your inspiration as to why they are movie inspired. So if you just have a plain old regular straight tonal sock, say Sweet Georgia Tough Love Sock, what does the color speak to you? What it, why is it movie inspired to you? Um, and because there will be two prizes, one is going to be from a random number generator uh, in the finished objects thread, and one is going to be Eric's choice. Um, I love doing random number generator because it, it just sort of removes me from the equation from having to make a decision. But in this case, I love movies. I live in a building. Um, my building is the Toronto International Fest Film Festival building. Uh, we love movies and I would love to be inspired uh, by you just as much as I hopefully inspire you. So what will I be making? Well, obviously I'm making movie night as a socks and I am because uh, I am such a Star Wars junkie. I am going to be using, yes, my junk yarn sock in the Ray colorway and the lightsaber mini, which will be heels, cuffs, and toes. Um, so that is going to be my movie night sock. I can't wait to get these started. Fortunately, cast on is today. Uh, and you'd think, Eric, but you've given me no time. I don't have the right sock yarn. You know you do. You've got something in your stash. You've got sock yarn in your stash, you know you do. Pick a color, any color. Uh, the pattern's what's important. Uh, it's movie night pattern. But what does it say to you? Does purple say um, the color purple to you? Uh, what about orange? You know, maybe it's on Golden Pond. Maybe it's, um, I don't know, Sophie's Choice. Maybe you do one sock of each. Who knows? Totally up to you. Be completely creative. One prize will be random. One prize will be Eric's Choice. So um, you're wondering about timing now. So we're starting today. We are going to go until June 9th. Um, if that date should change, that's the date that I have right now. If that date should change, you'll find it in, in the updates to that. It will only be longer, it will not be shorter. Um, that is more than enough time, I think, um, to really get through a pair of socks. This is quick, it's fast, it's easy, it's a no-brainer. Um, and I think we should all just really give ourselves a little bit of a break and a pat on the back for getting through the exploration station, Cal, don't you? No, I forgot to mention, how could I forget? I just talked about these. Remember these great skeins of yarn that I just talked about from, this is Red Sock, Blue Sock, and this one's Dyed in the Wool? You get your choice. You get one skein uh, along with your bag as the winner of those. So. Uh, the one that is the random number will be 
Uh, I will select the color for you that gets sent to you, and I'll probably poke through your stash and Ravelry pages to see what I think might work for you. Uh, and the other one is going to be your choice. So if I choose something, you get to choose something. So that's the way that's going to work. Um, so we're starting today. Cast on, get your patterns, get your needles out, cast on, and away you go. But what if you said, Eric, I don't have sock yarn I want to make into that pattern. I need to buy something. Where should I buy something? Uh, I have two suggestions for you. One is uh, I have shown in previous podcasts some amazing yarn that came to me from Colorful Eclectic Dye Works. Um, I don't know if it's Colorful Eclectic Dye Works or not. Colorful Eclectic, let's go with that. Um, I have shown her yarn before, she's amazing. Um, the colors are stunning. She has so kindly offered a discount code for viewers of the podcast. That discount code I will put somewhere here, uh, which is S P L U S T Cal 10. So S plus T Cal 10, and that will get you 10% off your purchase of her shop. And I will uh, also include her Etsy shop address. Uh, and another one that I wanted to sort of mention, and this one is, um, there's nothing in it for you or me other than some amazing, outstanding colored yarns, uh, which is from Kaleidoscope Dye Works. And um, Ali is, and I noticed this, I was poking through because I had a conversation with uh, Ramona, hi Ramona, uh, yesterday about um, speckled yarn in Canada and how hard it is to sort of not fine speckled, we tend to do a lot of, uh, there's a lot of amazing yarn dyers here, but I wanted to take a look through Etsy and see what I could find. Um, and Kaleidoscope has some truly outstanding colorways. Um, I, I ordered one, and frankly what got me to order one, although I really didn't need more yarn, I have plenty, um, and I ordered the China Blue colorway, so I'll put a picture here. So it's not here yet, I just ordered it. But what sort of made me immediately order it is that um, she has a note on the front of her, her Etsy shop that for the month of May, uh, the proceeds from the sale of yarn from her shop will be donated to the Red Cross um, in support of all of the really, truly uh, brave men and women and their families who have been evacuated from Fort McMurray. Anyone who's not familiar with it's big news, obviously, in Canada. Um, I'm not sure how far that stretched out to the rest of the world, but there is a massive forest fire. Um, that has basically decimated the entire town of Fort McMurray. Um, everybody's, I don't say everybody's lost their homes, but a large number of people have lost their homes, they've lost their businesses, they've lost everything. So um, the minute I saw that, I just thought, I, I have to support this. I've made a donation to the Red Cross myself already, um, but I thought, here's another way that I can help. Um, and I've got some yarn. Uh, out of it. So if you are looking for yarn, um, I can very highly recommend the Colorful Eclectic um, yarn. It is outstanding. I have uh, a number of them in my stash now, as well as a number of minis. Um, but I would also suggest that if you wanted to make uh, another purchase and maybe help a donation as well along the way, that Kaleidoscope Dye Works, uh, Allie's your girl. So that's about it for this week, guys. Um, we've covered a lot of ground. So keeping score, FO, done, WHIP, done, um, CAL, done, new prize of magazine, so there will be a thread for that. We've also got um, some prizes coming up um, that will be available in the new CAL, um, which is, I think it's going to be fun. Um, what else? Oh yes, there's some stuff coming in the future. Um, can't talk about it yet, uh, it's a little too soon, but there are at least two more cows that I am planning. Um, I really, really enjoy hosting them. I think they're a lot of fun. I hope you find them fun too. Um, they're a great way to sort of be creative, be part of the community. Sometimes um, some of us are more isolated than others um, or are more introverted and don't necessarily get out to knit nights and this gets to be your sort of virtual knit night as well. Um, so everyone who's had a great time at the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival that's uh, this past weekend, I'm so envious that uh, you guys all got to, to meet up. Um, I mean, I'm pretty fortunate I get to travel quite a bit and I get to meet some amazing people, but I really wanted to go to that one too. I can't help it, I want to go to the Mall. Um, but we've got some more cows coming, there's a lot of great stuff coming up this, this summer. Yes, we will be talking eventually about summer knitting, um, and maybe, you know what? That's going to be, I think, 
the prompt for the magazine. Yes, I've just made it up. Uh, the prompt for the magazine is going to be, what do you knit in the summer? There you go. Um, and uh, so I'm going to do the magazine giveaway for one. I will close that uh, in one week from today. Um, and what the hell, I'm going to throw in a second prize. I will pick two people. One will win the magazine. One will win Nathan's Sock Matician Sock Recipe, foolproof, toe up with heel flap and gusset. There you go. That's what we're going to do. So uh, it's been my pleasure to spend some time with you today. Hopefully you've enjoyed as well. Take care, be well, and happy knitting.